Today I'm going to show you a little trick that somebody showed me where you can take a normal seat belt and uh, lock yourself in place kind of like a race harness. In no way am I saying that this would replace a proper harness. So I just want to make that really clear. All right, well, it is a beautiful sunny day. I'm just out cruising around in the old Dakota RT. As some of you guys know, uh, I've started getting into a little bit of autocross with this thing, and I'm actually going to give you a bit of an update on that. But first of all, let's have a look at this little seatbelt trick. All right, now before we get started, there's uh, three things that I have to say. First of all, I did not come up with this. Um, I'm sure this is common knowledge in a lot of different circles. I've tried doing a little bit of light Googling and didn't see any videos come up, so uh, I am not trying to act like this is my idea. I am brand new to autocross, and uh, one of the guys that I was uh, getting some uh, lessons from was uh, showing me this. All right, the next two things that I need to mention are about safety. Um, I don't know if this is recommended or not. I mean, in a performance driving situation, um, you know, your seatbelt locking and not being able to get it off might be an issue. I just have to say that I'm relaying a tip that somebody gave me, but definitely do your own research and homework and determine if this is a proper thing for you to be doing. And then the final thing that I'm gonna say is with airbags, you're not supposed to get too close to them. Uh, this method, uh, kind of requires me to uh, sit a lot more forward than I would normally, but I've actually found for a couple of different reasons that that is uh, quite nice in terms of making things feel more secure. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I've got the seat all the way back as far as I can get it in this vehicle. It might be different in yours. I'm going to click the seat belt on, pull this really tight, and then give it a yank so it's locked like that. All right, now I'm going to grab the seat adjuster and slide it forward. Okay, now you're not supposed to get, I did a little bit of light Googling, again, don't quote me on this, but you're not supposed to get within about 10 inches of the steering wheel of the airbag. I'm pretty sure that uh, my belly might be a little closer than that, but up here, I'm definitely more than that. But uh, one thing this does is now I'm sitting a lot closer, but I mean the seat belt is like rock solid. I can't even reach to release the parking brake. And there has been a couple of times where I did this and I had to kind of jiggle my foot and uh, get it to, um, uh, you know, release the parking brake with my foot. So that's something to think about. It really does lock you in place. Now, uh, you need to think about how to get out of a situation like this because if you're in a performance driving thing and the car flips or whatever, you know, that's a problem. So I have done this a few times. I've found that on my truck, it's no problem to just click the button and release it. If there was a situation where that wouldn't release, I guess as a backup plan, you know, you could pull your uh, seat thing and move it back and then release it that way. But uh, let me just show you that one more time. So I got my seat back uh, farther than I would want it. It's all the way in this truck, but again, that might be different. Pull this so that it's really tight on your stomach. Give that a yank so that the thing locks. And I kind of push myself forward and then pull the seat uh, forward like this. And I mean, I am locked in there really, really solid right now. Hey, sorry, I just had to jump in here for a second. I'm actually just driving home. One really important thing that I forgot to say is just because you can lock your seatbelt in tight doesn't make it uh, even remotely comparable to a race harness. I mean, if you're doing performance driving and stuff, I mean, depending on what class you're in or what kind of speeds you're running or whatever, um, in no way am I saying that this would replace a proper harness. So I just want to make that really clear. All right. There's two things, uh, two big advantages that doing this gives me in this particular vehicle. First of all, the seat belt is locked in uh, really solid. I'm locked against the seat. It's very secure and I'm not flying around. And then another advantage is uh, now that the seat is more forward, I can really put my foot uh, into the floor. Now, if you're driving a vehicle that was a standard, um, possibly that's going to adjust uh, your seating position for better or worse, but this is vehicles and automatic. And uh, let me just show you when I put the seat all the way back, 
I can't really reach. I kind of can. You know, I could probably push my foot in here, but it's a lot less secure. When the seat's up there, I can really push in. And between that and both hands on the steering wheel, uh, it really gives me a much more uh, focused and confident driving position where I'm not really flopping around the car as much. Uh, it was a real problem the first time I did an autocross. I actually used to stick my hand right down here just to hang on because the g-forces were just flinging me around in the truck and then just i would just be driving one-handed and uh, as i learned when i did that autocross training day um this is so much more stable and really a much better way of doing it all right now for those of you who have been following along with this truck and this channel um as i mentioned a few videos ago i'm planning on doing a bit of an autocross build with this thing and uh, i'm starting to get some parts coming in this is all the stuff that i've got from energy suspension um i've got new uh, front and rear bump stops i've got uh control arm bushings rear leaf spring bushings and uh, all that stuff and then i've also got a very basic uh, three inch lowering block thing for the rear and then i'm going to uh, cut the coils on the front all right, now one uh, pretty hard truth that I've come to realize uh, after doing a few autocross events is that uh, it is all about the tires. Um, I'm in a little bit of an awkward position with what to do for this truck. Um, I'm gonna lower it. Uh, unfortunately, some of these uh, parts are gonna move me up into a different class. Everybody says you should just stay in stock uh, as long as you can. And unfortunately, if I put uh, poly bushings in, um, uh, anything that holds the weight, so I believe that would be control arms and rear leaf springs, then uh, that would move me up to a different class. And also in the uh, stock class that I'm in, there's some sort of rule against cutting the springs, so I might have to buy a set of just lowered springs for the front, but... Uh, anyways, um, the biggest thing I've come to realize is that it is all about tires, and... Um, you know, I doubt that these improvements, I mean, it'll probably make the vehicle feel more sporty or it'll make it handle flatter, but I don't know if that's going to have any uh, effect on the tires sticking to the road. With something like autocross where you don't have banked corners, it's just a flat parking lot, uh, it's just right at the limit of what tires can do. I don't know if it's the biggest test that you could put tires through, but I mean, it's got to be close. These things are some Goodyear Forterra HL tires not even remotely something that would be considered a handling tire uh, i actually put these on recently thinking that they were going to be better than the other ones i had and there's really no difference once you're in the autocross situation um, anytime i hit the gas the rear end wants to spin when i'm going through corners the front always wants to slide i mean i've got major 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 traction problems out there uh, I'm looking forward to getting a good set of tires, but one of the problems is that uh, these tires are quite tall. Um, they're about an inch and a half taller than stock, uh, but they're also, uh, to get like a proper really good set of performance tires, um, something that's like borderline track only, uh, most of the people there are running uh, Falcon 660s and uh they don't really come in very tall sizes. I would be going a 275 40 um, 17 uh, of course it's a 17 inch rim but i think they're like four or five inches shorter than these which i don't know i just think that uh these trucks with small tires just look terrible so one of the other problems is that uh they're not supposed to be exposed to any kind of cold temperatures and uh, this truck lives outside so that means i would need to have a dedicated set of rims um you know with just my track tires on them and then maybe uh have another set of rims for my drive around tires so that's something that's really kind of getting in the way um i don't know how serious we're going to be getting about autocross this year i really enjoy it you know there's a lot of events to go in which i love but uh, I really am starting to question uh, how much is going to be happening this year because uh, I'm not sure that I'm ready to just buy another set of rims for this thing and uh, another set of tires and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we're talking uh, thousands and thousands of dollars right there kind of thing. I think the set of tires is probably um, approaching 1500 to two grand, and then God only knows what another set of rims is going to be and then another set of tires for those rims. So that's something that is definitely a little bit of an issue.
All right, folks, well, that's about all I got for you today. Just want to say thanks for stopping by. Please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of uh, new videos. If you want to check me out on TikTok or Facebook or Instagram, just search for Stocky Bald Man. I got lots of stuff on all of those. Anyways, hope you guys have a good day. See you on the next one.